Greetings, my name is Jason Yi. I'm a financial analyst with a background in engineering. I've spent a lot of time figuring out how the Canada Pension Plan works and how the CPP has become the focus of my work. I like to help people make good CPP decisions. Today I'm going to show you the basic steps that happen when your CPP retirement pension is calculated and what each of those steps represents. I won't be covering the itty bitty details. This video is only meant to be a basic overview. There are four main steps to calculate your CPP retirement pension plus one final adjustment. The first step is inflation protection. And step number two is to apply any special adjustments that you're eligible for. And step number three, your lifetime average earnings is calculated. And step number four applies what's called the earnings replacement rate. Finally, once all that is done, an adjustment is made based on the age you start CPP. Let's touch on each of these steps a little bit more, one at a time. The first step is inflation protection. Before anything else is calculated, a wage inflation adjustment is made. The wage inflation adjustment revalues the earnings you made in the past throughout your working life. Your earnings from the past are increased up to the present day value for the year in which you start taking your CPP retirement pension. It's also important to know that once you start taking CPP, your pension amount will then increase each January by an amount equal to price inflation. Nothing is lost to inflation with the Canada Pension Plan. I'd also like to point out that everywhere you see one of these cartoon-like thumbnails, I have a short animated video that explains how things work in a little bit more detail. My videos explain the CPP in an easy to follow way with everyday objects. As you can see, I have a short animated video that explains how the how inflation works with the Canada Pension Plan. So if you haven't already, I encourage you to watch my animated city CPP videos as well. The second step is to apply any special adjustments that you're entitled to. These special adjustments are designed to increase your pension amount if you qualify for them. These special adjustments are known as dropouts. They're called dropouts because the adjustment drops out or removes low earnings from your personal earnings history. Removing a low number from your earnings history might increase your pension amount because removing a low number will increase the overall average level of what's left. There are dropouts that everyone gets. This is called the general dropout. There are dropouts for caregivers of children who experience low or even no earnings because of their child raising duties. These are known as the child raising dropouts. And you can also drop out the period of time where you received a CPP disability benefit. Once your special adjustments have been applied, the third step is to calculate your lifetime average earnings. Your lifetime average earnings is a single number that is meant to represent what you put into the CPP program. If the total possible amount of pension credits that are available were represented by a pie, your lifetime average earnings would be the size of your personal slice of that CPP pie. The fourth step is to apply the earnings replacement rate to your lifetime average earnings. The earnings replacement rate is what the CPP is designed to provide back out to you. It is the proportion of your lifetime average earnings that the CPP is designed to provide to you as a retirement pension. The original CPP program is designed to provide you with a retirement pension that is 25% of your lifetime average earnings. When these four steps are completed, you get your basic retirement pension amount. At this point, there is one final adjustment. There is an adjustment that is applied to your basic amount that is based on the age you start taking CPP. The maximum benefit age is age 70. The adjustments to your basic amount work to their maximum effect when you start CPP at age 70. You'll get more dollars per month if you start CPP at age 70. On the other hand, the minimum benefit age is age 60. The adjustments to your basic amount work to their minimum effect when you start CPP at age 60. You'll get less dollars per month if you start CPP at age 60. You can start taking CPP on any month between age 60 and age 70. The later you start, the more you'll get. That's the trade-off. You can get money earlier, but if you do that, you'll get less money, or you can get more money if you start later. 
Earlier I mentioned that your lifetime average earnings is the size of your personal slice of the CPP pie. The age you start CPP determines how big the CPP pie is for you. Now earlier might sound better, but so does more. What to consider when deciding your own CPP start date is much more involved than I want to cover in today's basic overview. We'll have to leave that for another video. But before we wrap up, I need to mention a new detail that is very important. Up to this point, I have only shown how the original CPP program works. Now with the enhanced CPP, there are two new parts for the Canada Pension Plan. The first new part is called the First Additional CPP, or CPP-1. The second new part is called the Second Additional CPP, or CPP-2. Calculating the enhanced CPP follows the same basic four steps, but with a few small changes. The numbers change and do different things, but the general idea is the same. Let's look at what that means. First of all, the wage inflation adjustment remains the same. It's only after this part that things start to differ. Now things get a little bit more complicated because each of the CPP's three parts has to be calculated individually. For step number two, there are no longer dropouts as a special adjustment. Instead, the enhanced CPP has what are known as drop-in provisions. A drop-in means that income that wasn't actually earned is calculated. Then that pretend income amount is used to replace your real income if the pretend income is higher than the real income. Now, if this sounds confusing, don't worry. The point is that this will only be done if it will increase your CPP retirement pension. For the enhanced CPP, in step number three, your lifetime average earnings is calculated by always taking your highest 40 years of earnings. Step number four is where you've probably heard what's different about the enhanced CPP the most. As a reminder, you have to make contributions into the CPP on your annual earnings, but only up to a maximum earnings threshold. What changed is that more contributions are required on your earnings up to the original threshold. So this is what's going on for the first additional CPP. The extra contributions that you have to pay into the first additional CPP buy you an additional 8.33% of earnings replacement on your earnings up to that original threshold. That's the other major change that's happening with the enhanced CPP. The earnings replacement rate is increasing from 25% up to 33.33%. So with the base CPP or the original program, plus the first additional CPP due together, is that they provide a combined 33% of earnings replacement on your earnings up to the original earnings threshold. Also, the level of earnings subject to participation in the CPP has increased to a new higher earnings threshold. So what the second additional CPP does is it provides 33% of earnings replacement on your earnings between the original earnings threshold and the new higher earnings threshold. Once all that is calculated, in step number four, each of the three parts are added up to get a final total. Now, just like before, the final adjustment is made to the total based on the age you start taking CPP. The CPP provides a maximum benefit for those who start at age 70, but you can choose to take it earlier with reduced payments. That's it. That's a basic overview of how your CPP retirement pension is calculated. This is what's going on behind the scenes when people like myself are doing your CPP calculations. It can be important to look at all the individual parts because sometimes a decision that you have, such as the age you start CPP, will decrease your pension amount in one part, but will also at the same time increase your pension amount in another part. I enjoy figuring all that out so you can get the most out of the CPP based on the options that you have and your own priorities and individual circumstances. That wraps up this basic overview. For now, take care and may the true north be strong and free.